Hello, everyone, and welcome to the first Flower Power Live of 2022. Today, I'm going to be uh, talking a bit about our plant of the year, which is a beautiful tree, but it's also endangered. And that tree is hemlock. Now, hemlock uh, is Suga canadensis, and it is a member of the pine family and grows in forests around the world. There's not a whole lot of species. There's four in the United States and there are um, six others in Asia primarily. And it is a boreal or Northern species. It mostly grows in either high altitudes or Northern latitudes. And where I live, Suga canadensis is the main species. And then on the West Coast, Suga heterophylla, which is the Western hemlock, is the primary species there. But before I go any further, um, hi, I'm Allison from the Well Cultivated Life. And, I, and thank you for joining me here tonight. I want to dive into one quick important thing, because when people hear the word hemlock, a lot of times they think, oh, ooh, isn't that poisonous? And there is a type of plant called a poison hemlock that is a an, like an herbaceous perennial, and it looks very similar to a Queen Anne's lace type of a flower or other types, um, uh, osha flower. And this family of poisonous plants is not what we're talking about tonight. It is what Socrates to, took to kill himself off. Um, but I... We're in winter now, so I'm back to showing you pictures of things instead of live plants. But I wanted to show you the difference. So this here uh, is the poisonous hemlock. And in the center, we've got the hemlock tree. And then there's just a beautiful stand of hemlock, these beautiful tall trees that can grow up to uh, like 60 or 70 feet. And they can live up to 700 years or so. Now I do have some hemlock here, which I harvested a few weeks ago for some holiday decorating. And um, so this is, uh, this kind of like swooping, drooping is very um, indicative of hemlock. And the needles themselves are very, very short. They're really only about maybe a half inch. They're actually probably about one centimeter. This would be a good time for the metric system. Um, and so these trees, again, are huge and they grow in big stands. And one of the things about them is ecologically, they can tolerate shade. And so it's easy for them to, um, it's easy for them to be able to kind of grow in the understory underneath under tree other trees that might be maturing and they come in in what's called a late succession all right so they are um able like again they can tolerate the shade so they can grow underneath other trees now one of the other um, important things that they do is they are um they like a really moist and cool climate and so a lot of times you'll find them growing near the headwaters of uh, a mountain stream. And this is incredibly important because keeping the stream water cool creates a much more healthier environment for all of the different organisms that live there. So they play a really important role there. And they also, because they tend to grow kind of in these thickets, they serve as a very important place for wildlife to shelter during the winter. And those drooping um, branches allow the snow to shed off and it keeps it kind of a little less snowy underneath. And so a lot of deer in particular will um, shelter in hemlock. Now you are probably not going to go out and buy a hemlock to plant in your garden because they're very slow growing. And again, they are huge trees. And so they're really, hemlock should be met in the forest where it grows. And you really should get to know hemlock because hemlock is one of the most important plants that you could learn for surviving in the case that you ended up getting stranded out in the woods in the middle of nowhere. Hope you're in a hemlock forest because, first of all, 
the both the um the wood is not nearly as resinous as a lot of the other pine trees and so it's it's one species of tree that you could actually rub together and start a fire without matches and it also has a lot of those little needles and little teeny twigs that it sheds every year little teeny cones um they're only about this big i tried to go out in my yard and find some cones and they were like all frozen under the snow so don't get to show you any of those today and um but this is makes a great tinder now but the main um helpful thing about hemlock is that the inner bark is edible and now so when i say inner bark you know we look at a tree this is a twig and it's a little bit dried up because it's been inside for a couple of weeks but we can scrape off this outer part of the bark and we don't really want that but you could take out the softer bark underneath preferably from a bigger branch than this you're going to go hungry with this little teeny branch but um that is incredibly nutritious it has all the macronutrients it's got vitamins and you can either just kind of chew it up or you can shred it up if you had a bigger tree and you can make it into kind of like a hemlock noodle. Um, you can also dry it, make it into a flower. And in fact, um, the information I got from this lovely um, blog post by Mark Warren, who owns and directs Medicine Bow Wilderness School in Georgia. Um, he said that Cherokee men used to use this like a talcum powder put on their bodies and absorb their personal scent so that they wouldn't be detected when they would go out hunting. Um, now, you can also use um, hemlock medicinally. And primarily for that, you're going to use the twigs. And similar to, um, you know, similar to pine, in the springtime, the, uh, the new growth that comes out is going to be rich in vitamin C. And as I talked about la last week, I think it was with juniper, we're one of the only species, I had no idea, we're one of the only types of animals that does not make our own vitamin C. I, I thought all animals needed to get vitamin C from their food, but apparently we're, we're it. And so um, you can use this, you can boil it into a tea and it has an affinity, it's very warming. So what that means is if you have kind of like a stagnant condition, either kidneys, it also has an affinity for the lungs. If you've got like a boggy cough or you've got kind of like a, a stuck dry condition, when something, when a plant is warming, it's going to thin out liquids and allow them to move out of your system. So that, um, that helps as a diuretic, a diaphoretic, and also as a, an astringent. So you can make the tea, you can put it on wounds and, and use it on your skin. Um, as well. And uh, the milk and honey herbs, I got some of this information. She says, in the forest, hemlock has a very calming, soothing presence, and it tends to do the same in medicinal preparation. So that's been her observation or, or his, just as milk and honey, I'm assuming it was her. Uh, one of the really important ecological roles it has is that it is the host plant for a really important um, medicinal mushroom that a lot of people use now. Rishi. In fact, the botanical name for Rishi is um, Ganoderma is the genus and the species is Suga, which is Suga canadensis. So the genus of um, hemlock is actually the species for the Rishi. So this medicinal mushroom relies on hemlock as its host to grow out in the wild. Now, all of these things you know, the nutrition and all the ability to eat these wild foods, it really made me think, wow, when we people lived off the land and ate more wild foods, we must have been so healthy. Vitamins and we're getting an astringent and we're like just keeping our systems working just because of the foods that we're eating. And so compare that to like a bag of Cheetos or something. I mean, it's no surprise that we have a huge problem with all kinds of um, just chronic illness in our society today. So now I'm not telling you to go out and dig up a whole bunch of hemlock, but it's just interesting to think about how our diet has changed so much as we've gotten away 
from our connection with the land. Now, there's also a flower essence for hemlock and the main um, thing that hemlock flower essence does, and these essences are from the Suga canadensis, the Eastern hemlock, and it really helps us to transition through change. And it does this by really being a grounding, keeping us solid so that we can handle the change going on around us. So the um, Woodland Essences, which is Kate Gilday's, um, she just has beautiful um, essences and they really focus on, you know, the trees of the woods where they live. She says it's great for easing one through the process of change and personal transformation, for guiding one through a shift in awareness or consciousness, and supporting the changes that are ahead, whether they be personal or planetary. And some of the other um, sites also talked about how changes in planetary awareness, um, that hemlock is good for that. So it's interesting that this is our plant of the year because we have had a lot of upheaval in our planet in the last year or two between per personal planetary. Um, and so Hemlock's coming to us now and just saying, listen, we're going to get through this. Let's stay grounded and move forward with ease. And um, that sounds good to me. I say that after every time I talk about the flower essences, don't I? Sounds good to me. Love it. So let's get back to our card. Now, I talked about Hemlock um, and, and introduced the card two weeks ago when I was showing you the new Wheel of the Year. And so uh, the Wheel of the Year is a series of nine cards and you draw a card, one for each of the um, the cross quarter, solstice, and equinox. So that's eight cards. And then you draw the ninth card, which is the card that tells you sort of like what perspective should you be adopting in order to best um, approach and handle and move with grace through the things that are going to be happening in the year coming ahead. And so, of course, our solstice card was Lemon Balm. And um, the year card is obviously Hemlock. And so it's this um, in the tarot deck, it is the Herbcraft is tarot. It is represented by the emperor. Let's see if I can get a good. Um, and the emperor uh, card is very, it, it represents sort of mastery in, in many ways. And so, you know, an emperor is the master of the domain. And on the card, it has a mandala, a very organized and balanced uh, mandala that's using the cones and the twigs as well to create this sort of organized um, structure that's also beautiful, of course, um, on the page. And so the words on the card say, build strong boundaries. A sturdy structure supports abundant growth. Own your authority. And so when I talked about this previously, I was kind of focused in on, on like the boundaries and the structures and things like that. Now that might be really important in 2022 to really um, create good structures or containers for what it is that you want to accomplish. This makes sense if we're going to be approaching 2022 with a certain perspective, um, that would be it. Talking about the boundaries and making sure you, you know, you're capturing the things that you're creating in 2022. But um I revisited this a little bit and um, I just wanted to expand on it, which is why I wanted to do this whole show today. And so the archetype of the emperor, like I said, is not only just an authority figure or a, sometimes it represents like a father figure, but um, it these major arcana cards are archetypes of humanity. And so the um, what this is saying, on a, on a bigger uh, picture is that 
you are the master of your own um, authority. You have authority. You have stature. Just like the hemlock tree itself is has um, grown solid, rooted, grows in a way that keeps everybody else away. It knows what its place in the ecosystem is. And that's really, really important. And so what this is saying um, is that you have the ability to be the authority of your life. And um, although it's important to plan and organize and you know, somebody who has authority is not a disorganized person, most likely. And so if you are someone who tends to, like me, <clears throat> that's an awesome idea and runs off on a whim and then comes back, does all this cool stuff and then says, wait, what, what did I do? Um, then prob probably you do need to kind of create a little bit more structure and a container for yourself. However, there are some people who have too much structure too many rules, too many boundaries, and this makes them inflexible. And as a structure, you don't want to be completely inflexible. A wind comes through and snap, off you go. So I think the message is more, it's time to examine the structures and the containers that we um, have in our lives and how they support us. And are they too rigid? Are they not enough? And just to, you know, reassess rebuild if necessary. But really, what I think is that you are the container that you need. You don't need a new filing system, all right? You need to uh, step forward and present yourself as the authority and the container for your life, knowing that um, you have the ability, you have the knowledge, you have the wisdom inside, you are solid, you can, you got this, right? So um, stop looking outside yourself and recognize this year in 2022, own your authority and understand that you have the power within. So that is our main message from Hemlock tonight. But before I finish, I wanted to talk a little bit about the um, the tree itself and just acknowledge how important it has been for um, in, in our ecosystems. And it's a beautiful tree. It lives long. It's been it's it, like it holds systems together. And sadly, in the fifties, there was a um, uh, invasive bug. It's called a hemlock woolly adelgid, and it was imported from Asia, where the other hemlocks live. And it has begun to attack the eastern hemlock. I don't know if it's made it to western, um, the western hemlock or not. But literally, seven-year-old, hundred-year-old giant trees are now standing dead on mountaintops throughout the Appalachian Range because of this small bug that basically just sucks the life out of it. And so it's really sad to see these um, majestic trees disappearing from our forest. Um, unfortunately, helped by our changing climate, uh, moving the range north and so on. So I found this beautiful um, description from a woman. Um, uh, what was it? It was uh, Foliage Botanicals. And she describes her experience of reading, uh, of walking through a hemlock forest. So I just want to read that to you. I know we're going long, but I want to read this to you um, just as a way of closing. Walking, and maybe this can be a way that you can approach 2022 as well. Walking through a hemlock grove is like nothing else here in the east. Suddenly the woods get a little quieter, darker as you enter, the ground underfoot softer and more open. There's a great hush that seems to fall upon you inside and out. Maybe it's the way the wind blows through the massive sweeping branches or the light dapples through their feathery silhouettes or the unmistakable sensation of your feet pushing through layers of tiny rusted needles settled silently on the forest floor, accompanied by the low eerie hooting of the barred owl hidden up in the dark canopy above. 
or maybe it's just their majestic nature. Often the oldest and largest trees in the woods, huge and dark trunked, branches like great lacy curtains closing you in, a tree that so very much feels all knowing, the great God of the Eastern forest. Beautiful. So if you live somewhere where hemlocks grow, get out and visit with this majestic tree and uh, bring in some of the strength that this tree has this year. Thank you so much for joining me tonight. And I will see you next week for another Flower Power Live. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.